Yo, do us a favor and yourself a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to tap that notification bell as well so you can stay updated. Now let's get to the video. This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. It's Illinois Radio, Chicago's most valuable radio show. I'm your host, Biko, alongside Pretty Riot and Illinois Jones. And as yeah. always, we bring you all the illest guests from around the city and globe. Yes, yes. And today we got Kenneth Smith Jr. in the building. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to Illinois Radio. We got the champion in the building, man. How you feeling? I'm good, I'm good. I just got back in town, I ain't gonna lie, like a couple hours ago. Where you, Where you come from? from? Yeah, uh, Phoenix. Oh, uh, I know the change yeah, of weather just fights. pissed you off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't even that hot out there. It was cool. It was like, I still need a jacket out there. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, uh, one of my uh, teammates, uh, Muhammad Ali Grinson, matter of fact, Nico mm -hmm. Ali Walsh, he fought out there on ESPN last night, so I just... You know how cool that is to casually just be cool yeah, with yeah. Muhammad Ali. Ali Grandson, you feel me? Like, <laughs> and he said it so smooth. Y'all yeah, just yeah. Yeah, Muhammad Ali. Boy. Yeah. Muhammad Ali grandson. Jimmy just was kicking it down there. We, how how y'all tap in with each other? Uh, he so my coach, Coach K, he from DC. So we started training in Vegas like last year. So we we were seeing him around, but then like, I guess he saw like how we work. So he started coming around training with us and stuff, and then me and him got real cool because he don't got a lot of experience in boxing. Like he started late, I mm -hmm. guess, just to like because his granddad. So he started late. He ain't really had no amateur fights. Then he turned pro. So I be like, kind of like schooling him, helping him. He called me his sensei. So okay, yeah. So how, how does that make you feel? Yeah, you feel me? I mean, I, I, a lot. I'm I've been boxing since I was eight. So a lot of people like look up to me. Like a lot of like. The guys that train with me, they're younger than me. They're like 24, 25. I'm t I just turned 29. So they ask me a lot of questions. So I'm used to that because when I was an amateur, I was on the USA team. I was ranked number one in the country. I missed out going to the Olympics 2012 by one point. I lost to the wow. Olympian by one point. So wait, wait. Was it like a point as far as like a punch point? Yeah, like, they, like, yeah that's how they used to score the amateur boxing. It's like a point system. Like it would be – they changed it in 2013, but it would be like – a judge and they have a red corner clicker and a blue corner clicker or it'd be like a computer like a red tap and a blue tap mm -hmm. and then if they see you like land a clean punch or like a clean like like right straight on straight on their tap whatever mm -hmm. color it was so it used to, a lot of times it would be as to me do you rem hold up do you remember the age you was when you first missed out oh yeah i was uh i was like the youngest person at the olympic trials i was 17 i had just turned 17. Damn, man. Did did that, like, alter the way you did things, like, after not making it just from that one um, point? Knocking niggas out after that, really. <laughs> so, so, for real, I ain't like I used to hate boxing. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I hated it. I see. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> yeah, I hated it. When I, uh, it was around the time I was 16 when I started liking it, because, so the age groups was, it was 15, 16, and then it was 17 all the way up to 34. But I was still 16 in my first tournament with the men because it was Olympic year and I'd be 17 by the time the Olympics come around. So they let me fight with the grown men. And I ended up winning the, the whole tournament when I was still 16. And that's when I was like, all right, I could do something with this. I could, I could make this, this work for me. This would be a career. So you said you started boxing at eight, but you didn't really start liking it until you turned mm -hmm. 16. So how did you get into it? Like, was that something your parents put you in, or is it something yeah, you just my, wanted to try out? Uh, my dad forced me to do it because he came up to the school when I was small. Like, ain't nobody messing with me, but he was just like, just in case, you going to learn how to fight. He was like, you could quit once you learn, like once you get good at it. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I didn't really know what else to do. I said, I had been doing it a couple of years, and I'm competitive. So, like, that first trophy, and I got my hand raised. I'm like, all right, I like to win, so... So when did you get your first trophy? I was eight. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> when I started. <laughs> and he didn't even like it. <laughs> yeah, my parents' house, uh, like, I moved out. Me and my uh, me and my girl stayed together. And my, I left all my, like, my amateur stuff. It's at their house. They got a, it's like a, a wall full of trophies, trophies. and belts wow. and medals and all type stuff. Like, like, what was what was getting your attention if you didn't like boxing from eight to sixteen? Like, what was what was a hobby that you was into, or was or were you into anything outside of? I ain't gonna say I ain't like I ain't like it. Like, I fell in love with it when I was like sixteen. I started liking it around like thirteen, maybe, but I still wasn't like 
All the I, way. I want to do this for my like my whole life. This is what I want to do. What did you see yourself doing? Not I don't that. know. <laughs> not, 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 boxing. At this, not at this point that has been so long. I can't even think like what life is like will be like without boxing because like That's I don't it. know what like when I wake up after a fight and I get like some days like some days off or a week off or something, I be, I don't be knowing what to do with my time. I just be like, all right, I'm gonna just go to the gym. I don't, I don't know what to do. Oh yeah, that's so. You don't passion. have no other hobbies. You don't like. I to mean, I, man, I go play basketball with my homies sometimes. Get that you have ass any non-sport on the court. related hobbies? Oh, not sports. Not sports like my life for real. <laughs> like I ain't getting my ass bust on no court, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports, sports like my life for real. I go, uh, I go hang out with the guys sometimes. Me and my family will go. Go eat, go to movies, something. But I don't really be doing too much. I want to, I want to chime in on uh, your father because you said your father kind of like you know made you get into boxing. If I'm not mistaken, didn't he boxed it himself, correct? Yeah, he used to box. He, uh, he, he. That's his job, really. Uh, right now, he worked for the city. He mm. at Ogden Park. He the boxing instructor. Did, isn't he like a Golden Glove? Yeah, he won the Golden Gloves in 2004, I think. So let me say, he only reason he fought in the Golden Gloves was because. I ain't like boxing, and I used to be like, I don't know if he thought I would be like, if I saw him like being willing to do the stuff he was telling me to do. Oh, no, nah, that's dope. So that's he, a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why he, he fought with the go to gloves to show me, like, I'm with, I do it. So if I do yeah, it, you can do it yeah. too. Did you ever feel the pressure to like follow up in his footsteps, considering that he did have the accolades that he did, that he had? Uh. Cause I feel like a lot of times when like kids go into sports that their parents play, it's like a pressure to be just like them. Mm-hmm. Like you, Bronny, you gotta be like LeBron. I mean, I, mm-hmm. It's funny, nah, cause I'm better than him. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hold up. And I hear Sia tell you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that. But that's that's good though. That's that's not a bad thing. Like yeah, he'll, he'll tell you that. Like you know, with your father coaching you and making sure you, he will want you to, yeah, you know, be better than him. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I'm one of the best in the world, so. Like right now, I'm ranked number fourteen in the world, so ain't too many people better than me. <laughs> man, look at here, y'all. We got we got Kenneth Smith, Sam, 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 Sam. Sam. Ken- oh, I'm so so sorry, Kenneth. Sam. I don't know what the hell made me say Smith. We got the boss man in the. See, I just got bossed around real quick right there. <laughs> Illinois Radio is giving out free promo throughout the month of February. If you have a business or are in entertainment, you should take advantage of this by visiting illinois.co slash free promo. That's I-L-L-A-N-O-I-Z-E. And tell them Jones sent you because you might get an extra hookup. Who knows? I love the word free. Do you? So before the break (laughs) or actually on the break you were talking about like all the traveling that you did Mm -hmm. so i heard you say that you went to the ukraine so how was it actually like traveling to the ukraine and like be fighting while you were over there uh i ain't ain't like going into ukraine why not it was just the food for one like my whole team we was just like it was some juice they was giving us i don't know what it was it tastes like vinegar (laughs) <laughs> what? Okay, I was not vinegar expecting him correct. to say vinegar. vinegar. We, was, <laughs> we was eating, we was eating like bread for real. Like they was giving us like whole spreads. It just like we couldn't. We was just like I don't know. Like, I don't know what this is. Like, so y'all just didn't want to try it, or y'all tried it? Nah, and it was I nasty. tried it. I tried it. <laughs> like the only thing they got good is this bread. <laughs> like, like I eat the vegetables. I was eating the vegetables they was giving us, but we was going to like find a corner store, going to get like. Snacks and stuff, or like the USA Boxing, they send us like a, a suitcase full of like it's like uh, granola bars and all types of stuff. So I'm finna say like it, what they was feeding y'all wasn't that good for you, like your diet. Oh uh, yeah, well at one point we was like the whole team we was like I don't know we might not fight because I ain't got no energy because I, <laughs> I ain't been eating this food they giving us. I don't know what's going on. Like how is that traveling and out the country mm-hmm. and and having to fight? Like how was the, what's the treatment like? How does like how does they how do they cater to boxers that's not from other countries? Uh, it de- it depends where you at. Uh, when I went to Kazakhstan, they was like all the black boxers really. I'm, I'm be honest. They was just like it felt kind of weird. They would run up to us asking to take pictures because I guess they ain't never seen no black people. Mm-hmm. So we went to McDonald's and this is like a crowd of people asking to take pictures with us. Like I was celebrities, yeah, cause just because of the because they ain't never seen skin. black. Like it was Mexicans on our team, uh, like other races, but they ain't 
Does that when they seen us, it was like, oh, it's black people basically. Does that make you feel weird, like a yeah. spectacle? Yeah, it made me feel weird because I had dreads at the time too. So oh. it, it made me feel weird. Like and it was me and this other guy. He had dreads, I had dreads, and they was asking us for the like most pictures. So I'm like. I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy about this or like. Right, am I flattered like, or what? Maybe they know who the original people are. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, maybe they know I mean, y'all look like maybe. the original people, bro. Yeah, maybe. Hey. Like, yeah. yeah, I've been, the first time out the country was to Ireland. It's like all this for boxing, though. Like, is Ireland. it black people in Ireland or? Yeah, it's some black people in Ireland. Oh, no, yeah. no, I mean, I mean, of course we going to say yeah, but <laughs> did you right. see that? I'm like, yeah, he been there. He, yeah, about, he want to know if it's some brothers. Nah, yeah, it's some black, yeah, black people in Ireland. <laughs> With the accents? Yeah. Oh, damn. It's man. a boxer uh, from Ireland. Uh, like, I don't know him, but I know who he is and he know who I am. Like, he commented on some of my stuff. The Black Lucky Charm. Yeah, his name, like, <laughs> yeah, he, he black. He got a, he got an accent. He got an Irish accent, but he look like us. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's probably his box Black today. Is crazy. You, you know what, Jones? I, I can't I can't take you. Like since we talk about traveling, what's some things you like you have to take with you that you've learned since day one? Like if I don't take these things, it may throw me off course. Mm, I ain't never really too much. But now I need to take my game for real. I play 2K a lot, so <laughs> I need to <laughs> keep your mind right. Because I don't really be doing that. I just go to the gym, so I don't want to I'll be sitting up in the house and I'll be, I'll be like, all right, I need to play the game. I, don't, I need to do something. Oh no! Yeah, uh, what's a song that gets you in the zone when you in the gym? Uh, I listen to a lot of ESTG. So, oh, he be in that fucking yeah. When I'm, in, when I'm in the gym, I I I, I, I throw us some ESTG. <laughs> That's your guy. That's your guy. That's some good high energy. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Do, do your father travel with you as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. So it's my dad, and I got another coach, Coach K. He uh, so my first. Camp usually like six weeks, so my dad come like the last three, cause he working and stuff. So he come like the last three, first three is just me and my other coach. Then my dad come the last three, and we'll finish up. I, I gotta, I gotta know too, like with you, you know, with you doing what you doing, you having your father back you up. At times, do it get hard? Is it tough? Do you feel like you being Michael Jackson at all? Nah, uh, when I was younger, maybe, but now that I'm, I'm, I'm grown, like I don't, like we don't really. You know, they don't bother me. Like, it used to be like a, I, I'm a kid, and my dad in the gym with me, and my dad go home with me, and then it's just, shit, we talk about boxing, like, all day. But now that I'm, I'm old and I'm, on, I'm out on my own doing my own thing, we don't really, we talk about boxing in the gym. Then we talk about boxing if some fights coming on, or if I got some, like, some business coming up, we talk about, like, some fights coming up for me. But otherwise, it's just like, it's just like brother-dad relationship and everything. Really, but yeah, he had to he had to learn how to separate it though when I was a kid because mm-hmm. sometimes it'd be annoying like coming home and then like like I'm out the gym but this shit still feel like I'm in the gym <laughs> like right. so well that's to, why you said you didn't like it huh? yeah we had to learn how to <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't like that. I just say, I just say, we'll do it. <laughs> I used to ask my mom because my dad was still was working somewhere else at the time, so he had my mom take me to the uh, to practice, and I'd be like, "Yo, uh, can you take me to the park? Or I want to go play basketball or something." You know how black she was like, "Nah, I ain't finna get into it with your daddy." He found out I ain't take you to the to, bo- to the boxing gym, but we going to the boxing gym. I'm like, all right, <laughs> damn. What was it like? I mean. Um, like being from Chicago, mm-hmm. and we're learning, we're still learning the boxing culture here, and what it, and what yeah, it. Yeah, I know. What, I always say that I was like Chicago, a basketball place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're still learning the culture of boxing and what it, the history of it. Is there any like do people underestimate boxers from Chicago? Ooh, like in mm-hmm. the overall in the industry too. Yeah, I want, that's a. Mm, I want to say they underestimate them. It's just like it's places. In the boxing like world, it's places that you know if somebody made it out of there as a boxer, then you know they like really good. I ain't gonna say Chicago one of those yet. Like it's like like DC, Philly, yeah, Philly, places like that. Like that's known for boxing is yeah, but Chicago ain't there yet. So, but I wouldn't say they underestimate it because it's box. It'd be boxers from like everywhere, like the craziest places you wouldn't even like small towns and. Right outside a big city, so I ain't gonna say it's underestimating. But at this point, we ain't really got too many people like on that level. That's yeah, yeah. And I ain't even gonna say I think it's I think people in Chicago be having talent just just like anything else. They just get distracted and don't know how to 
like compartmentalize and stick to something. Do you do you feel at least it's a, a market here for you know for boxing? I think one can be made. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I want to do. So I feel like so me and my team, my manager and stuff. My plan is to have a world title by the end of this year, and then I've been talking to my my people like I want to fight here, like bring a fight here. So. So is that okay? Because you said you want to bring, like, make a market for it. So is that how you would make a market for it in Chicago by bringing fights here, or is it going to take like an effort from you and other oh, yeah, boxers in the city? It's definitely not going to be me by myself. So like, say if I was to bring, be able to get a fight here, and say, say I'm the main event, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I had like some input on like who else going to be on the card. So like, cards, boxer cards, be happening like anywhere from like six seven fights then sometimes like be like 10 12 like my last fight the car had like 13 fights on it so like it'd be people it's like like local people mm-hmm. say if you ain't the attraction <clears throat> to get on the car you got to sell tickets so it'd be you trying to find the guys that could sell the most tickets to pack the place out and then that will get the word going around and then they'd be like when the next one when the next one and then It'll be, but it'll be a thing where you got to work together. So, it, all right, bef- before we get into this break, are you <clears throat> are you independent? Nah, I, I'm signed with uh, with PBC. <clears throat> okay, so you signed with PBC. Um, it was something I was thinking about as far as like, because okay, with it not really being a market here, how would a a person obtain the type of success you've gained with coming from here? Like, what uh, what's you know? I'll be, I'll be out like I like. People all over like know me because I've been, like I've been really doing this since I was a kid. Like I don't, like, this ain't a hobby. <laughs> like I really been doing this since I, since I was a kid. So everybody in the boxing world, like all over the world, knows mm-hmm. me. See, and that, I'm speaking on like for for those that's trying to get to where you at. That's boxing. Yeah, oh, you like, gotta you gotta like really do this. You can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna stay around at home. You gotta go to all like if you were amateur, you you know you gotta go all those tournaments. You gotta go to all the national tournaments. You gotta do good at the national tournaments, make a name for yourself. Cause ain't nobody gonna like just come looking for you. Mm. You gotta like this ain't like it ain't like a say rap. Somebody can hear you and be like, oh, well, I want to know where he at. Oh, who are you, where you from? You gotta go and they gotta you gotta let them see you. You gotta impress. Like when I was sixteen, uh, Jay Prince was like when I first turned pro. Jay Prince was my manager. So, uh, James Prince? Yeah, James Prince. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rap, rap a lot. Wow. Yeah, okay. I was signed with him for like four years. Damn. Yeah. Like, we still cool. I still talk to him. All of them, like, I'm still cool. I, I'm cool with his son. I talk to his son all the time. But yeah, so they, that's how I was at one of them tournaments, like I just said. We gotta go to them tournaments. And he seen me at one of them tournaments. And his people contacted me and was like, whenever you ready to turn pro, holla at me. Yo, what's up? It's your girl, Pretty Riot, and I'm sitting pretty starting riots right here on Illinois Radio. And every single week, you come and you watch these great interviews, and you still ain't subscribed. What? What are you doing? Hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on too. Before we went to break, you mentioned that you was once managed by Jay Prince. Uh-huh. Like, how was that being? Like. His reputation speaks for itself, uh-huh. but for him to be get into boxing, you know, a lot of people didn't know th- that he was even in boxing like that until like a few years ago. Uh-huh. So, what was that like in um, being managed by Jay Prince? I mean, it was it was cool. Uh, like Jay, cool. I, I I used to be able to I could call him and just talk to him and stuff. It's just every it situation don't work out for everybody. Like me and him. We still cool. When I see him, his love, he he'll be like, "Yo, what's up, Kenny?" Uh, blah, blah. I talk to his kids all the time. Uh, but it's just that that business situation for me. It just wasn't that it wasn't working out for me. Right. So we just uh, after my contract was up, we just we ain't renegotiated. It was just. Did, did you have to travel? Like you know, knowing that you're based here, and then mm-hmm. Prince is based in Texas. Yeah. Was that also an issue, you know, with the travel around? Nah, did you move? Nah, that wasn't that wasn't an issue. It was just some boxing stuff. Uh, uh, like I go to Houston, but it wasn't the thing with me not being signed to him. Now it wasn't really, you no, know, like personal stuff. It's gotcha. just, it just 
boxing stuff. Yeah. I, I wasn't even trying to get into the box. Nah, I was just saying in general, nah, like, just, traveling was just, it. A, nah, it ain't traveling because he my manager. I don't need, he don't really need to be around. He just, mm. like, handle business stuff. I mean, so, he, like, him being in Houston don't really matter. Like, like my managers right now, they, they in D.C. So, like, the... They're traveling on a man like the coaching part that 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 uh, affected like my coach, Co- Coach K that I started working with, he from DC but that dude he don't live nowhere he just be all over the place all he over. don't live he nowhere he, 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 he live very well he he live the, way, the, way, the way he said it was like this man just be over here <laughs> over there. I said that not because we've been training in Vegas the last year and then like two weeks ago he was like oh you gonna start camping uh Phoenix this time for a couple weeks so I'm gonna go train in Phoenix for a couple weeks, then go to Vegas. So he used to be all over the place. And that's not and Phoenix not too far from Vegas. It's not nah, it ain't that far at all. I mean, um let's let's actually chime in on when you were, you know, let's let's go back to when you were in your teenage years because mm-hmm. you also was casted for a docu documentary. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I believe like off air you were saying like you were being followed with a camera f- for for some years. Yeah, like eight, nine years. They it started when I was 14 and it ended in 2019, I think. 2018, 2019, something like that. Is that annoying? <laughs> exactly. It used to be. Like, I used to be like. Because <laughs> I it my, uncomfortable. Yeah, my uh, my girl used to be like, why you being so mean to them? Like, <laughs> I'm like, it wouldn't even be on purpose. It was just be like, because they was from Germany, too. The directors and stuff, they was from Germany, so they got the accent. They like, like they trying to be nice, but it's just like. Alright, but I I apologize to them after everything was like wrapped up. Like I apologize. Like my bad. I was just I, I wasn't used to this at the beginning. I was just like I wanted y'all to leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, they been following you, <laughs> right? Hey, watch you grow they up. Oh, the real. Like, they, came, they came up because I went to King, so they came up to the school. They came to the school. I tell you, they came to the school right. So I guess they thought it was like just safe to leave like all their camera equipment, <laughs> oh. like all their camera equipment that they wasn't using. They left it in the in the in the van, and when they came out, all the, the windows were busted and it was gone. Wow, somebody got some good video. They from Germany. Okay. They from Germany, so they ain't know. They, I bet they know now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they had, they had, it was a couple situations with them. Like one time, we was on seventy. So my dad from around the area on like. 75th Peoria, 75th Green. Okay. So they was like walking around with me, like walking on, we was on 70 something at Halstead, like 78th in Halstead. And some dude, he walked up like, hey, why the fuck y'all recording me? Why y'all recording me? Blah, blah, blah. And then they like, hold on, hold on. He walking up like about to like try to break the camera. So then he he seen me. I'm like, yo, 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 they with me. They with me. He's like, they, he's like, y'all, y'all lucky y'all know him. I be seeing him around him. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the people have to do. They put that like, in the in the background somewhere in the documentary, it's in the back. Like I know it because I know how it sounded. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it don't stand out, but I can hear it in the background when we was when I was walking down that area and it was recording. I can hear it like the dude in the background because I know how it sounded when it was going on. I can tell the boy, ain't nobody recording you. What was what was that like going to school with a camera crew every day, having that type of attention? Oh, it's so they ain't put that in the like long feature length documentary. They put that in the like short film. But it was cameras. It was people that I didn't really talk to. Like mm-hmm. they, like they, we had the same class together. We we go to class together. But they like try to when they was recording me walking in class. They like walk on the side. Like, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get their camera on the real. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people was being phony. Yeah, like I don't even rock with you like that, dude. Why is you over talking? With me? <laughs> <laughs> Teachers being extra nice. Yeah, like anybody I talked to in high school, like I was cool with. I'm still cool with him to this day. So that's what I was for the act. Yeah. If he was cool. Oh yeah, my brothers, <laughs> like them, my all my my guys, my brothers, like I still talk to them every day. Like that's why my girl, she anti-social, so she don't be like she be like when people that's that went to high school with us that never talked to me or I, she ain't never seen me talk to because she went to school with me too. So. She'd be like, she'd be feeling like, man, he just, they just trying to talk to you because you kind of popping in and they, they want some attention. Did that used to get to you, though, back? Like, I know at, at, at a time, uh, a sense of time, you probably felt a certain way that, you know, people that's not your friend trying to be your friend. Nah, because I could tell. So, um, like, I entertain you. Like, it's cool. We cool. I ain't, I ain't, like, I'm a cool dude. So, like, I'm probably too nice sometimes. So. So I just be cool, like we ain't getting too in. Like 
you know, like an intimate friendship. We I ain't telling you no personal stuff. Like if we kicking, we we kick it, we, we cool. No, but like I got my like I got my my friends, like my my homies, like my brothers that they're my boys. But anybody else, it's just, it's cool. Like I ain't. I ain't no way, I ain't no asshole. How is it maintaining a relationship in boxing when you having all these achievements and you always on the go out the country, in the country, in other cities? Like, mm-hmm. like how is it to to focus on boxing and also you're a family man now. Mm-hmm. You're expecting another one. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Congrats. 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 congratulations, and, and keeping the household still intact. Like how was like how was like I see boxers, yeah. a lot of boxers like does do that very well. Yeah. I mean, cause boxing come with discipline, so it's uh keep her happy. I need need some discipline. Uh, like I knew her since we was fourteen, fifteen years old. Like we went together back then. We she was my best friend. Like in high school, she was my best friend. Then we got together. We was like twenty. So nah, oh, we got okay. it. <laughs> I, 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 we, that's my fiance. I gotta stop saying my girl. I keep saying my girl. I I proposed her in October, so I. Oh, congratulations oh, congrats on that too. I be forgetting to say that. <laughs> so yeah, she she been around she been around this been around me in this box stuff for a minute. So she know how how I go. Like she she still get irritated that I gotta leave for training and stuff, but she know what what's the what's the end goal. And the last two years, my my life didn't change like dramatically. Yeah, because I fought on. Um, ESPN in 2021. Okay. I fought this dude. He So he was like prospect of the year, which is basically like the equivalent to like rookie of the year, NBA rookie of the year. Okay. He was 11 no, like, he was like 12 low, 11 no, 11 knockouts. And they had me like a plus 1200 underdog on the uh, bookies. Like, FanDuel had me like plus 1000. Disrespectful. DraftKings had me like plus 1000. Then one of the casinos in Vegas had me plus 1200. Damn, I should have betted on you. What I does wish that I even that. mean? Like, so it take a you bet a hundred dollars. Say if you plus twelve hundred, <laughs> you bet a hundred dollars, you are gonna win twelve hundred dollars. Oh, the bet, yeah. The bet. They hit him at the underdog, okay. basically. Yeah. They hit him losing. So, oh, okay. So that was the that was the fight that, like, like I was telling you about air. Like, I, I took two L's mm-hmm. early on in my career, and it was just stuff I had to like. Literally, when people say I lost. Is not a loss; it's a lesson that applies. So, to what me. what did you learn with those two L's? I learned, I learned medical stuff about myself. I learned like bo- professional boxing and amateur boxing are two totally different sports. Like medical, like I got a sickle cell trait. Okay. So I don't got sickle cell, but I got sickle cell trait, and I didn't know that that would affect me. Like, like I did some research. I hired a nutritionist, uh, and they was letting me know like. Uh, so boxing, you dehydrate a little bit to make weight. Okay. And I didn't think the sickle cell stuff was affecting me. So, like, I'd be fighting, and I wouldn't be tired, but my body would just, like, shut down in the middle of a fight. Damn. Oh, yeah. that's scary. Like, I'd get through the fights, but I don't know how I'd get through them, like, my body. Like, one fight, the fight, I, one, of the, one of the fights I lost, I was in the locker room warming up, and I felt it just, like. Kick in. Yeah. And then, but it was too late because it was on Showtime, it was on TV. They came back there, like, it's time to walk to the ring. And I felt it right before. But damn. So but how do you like? What was going through your mind at that moment? Like knowing that you just felt this click, you got to go was, out here and I fight. I was like, shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I felt good before that, and I was like, shit. And I, all my energy just went like this. Oh. I went out. I had to fight eight rounds, like basically on fumes, just like you was gassed. Yeah, from like I ain't had no like I wasn't tired. Like my breath, like breathing wise, I wasn't tired. My body just was like. Did like for the second one? Was that the first? That was your first one. You nah, know? that was my second one. The first one I lost, I had, uh, I had to get surgery. Damn. Oh, on your arm, you still went out there. Yeah, I had I had bone spurs in my elbow, so like the second round, it was. I still both of the fights was like close. Like I barely lost. It was a majority decision type. So the second round, I like like I knew it was. I knew something was wrong with my elbow already. For like the past year, I was fighting with a like a mess. Yeah, up. I had one, I had one like three, four fights with it being hurt. But that fight, like in camp, I heard it. But I'm like, all right. Oh, the doctor got a cortisone shot. I was like, all right, fucking, I'm finna, I'm finna thug it out. 
man. Thug it out. <laughs> he thugged yeah. it out. Then I uh second round I got like I, I don't know if I blown if I blocked the punch or I missed the punch and I couldn't really move my right hand, my right arm the rest of the fight. Mm-hmm. I'm so, thinking your elbow popped out. Nah, nah, I had bone spurs. It's like, like bone like chip off and get oh. stuck in the joint. So they had to Basically, go. you had an inside splinter. Was that from you knocking a nigga nah, out or something? I don't know. I don't, know it. I don't remember exactly what it was from, but it happened. They say it happened a lot in tennis. They say it happened a lot in tennis. Okay. Oh, so they had to go in there, like, suck all the, like, loose bone out and then shave it down. Damn. What the fuck? <laughs> how is <laughs> it? Bones like, could get loose. Like, uh, playing ball, playing, playing a sport mm-hmm. with the single tr- with the single cell trait mm-hmm. is difficult. Like, how do you now prepare for fights like that changed up your uh, whole training yeah, camp. Yeah, it I'm changed sure. everything. Uh, I got a nutritionist now. Uh, perfect. They more than nutritionists. Let me not disrespect them. It's called. Uh, if anybody need a nutritionist or anybody need something to help them with they they nutrition and they play sports, it's they Instagrams perfect the athletes. They okay. work with like any world champion you know in boxing or UFC. They they done been around them and they work with them. So they like and I'm in, when I'm in camp. Most of the time, I don't eat nothing. I don't drink nothing. Nothing that they don't tell me is cool to drink. Right. Like especially fight week. Like fight week, I'm they there with me. As soon as I finish working out, they got a, a bowl of food for me. Like, here, eat this. Or they got a drink for me. Here, drink this. Eat this, drink this, eat this. You got to eat at this time. You got to drink this much at this time. You got to eat this much at this time. Like, they got it down to, like, a science. Like, they help me with my weight cut, everything, like, you need to weigh this on this day because you got this many days to get down to this weight, and you got to weigh this on this day. So do you have to bounce between, like, weight classes oh, a lot? Yeah. <laughs> nah, not weight classes, but, like, I got my walk around weight, and then I got my fight weight. So right now I'm probably, like, 160. I fight at 140. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, just learning, okay? I heard you say science, and it brought me back to when we brought an artist in on this film, Dada. He was talking about how music mm-hmm. is like science. Yeah. And I know you consider boxing as like a sweet science. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little more on that? So, boxing ain't fighting. It's two different things. Boxing is, like, you ain't just in there swinging. Like, you really in there thinking, especially, like, boxers like me. Like, I'm not a brawler, like. I know how to brawl and fight if I really need to, but I don't like to get hit. So I don't think nobody <laughs> so wants to get hit. A, so, <laughs> so, uh, and a lot of people, like my coach, K, that's what he teach. He teach us to be smart when we in there, to know what's going on at all times, know what what, what you need to do, uh, react. Like, it ain't, you ain't just going in there throwing punches. Because somebody throwing punches back at you. Mm-hmm. Like, most street fights last, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it ain't no fight. Like you boxing in there, and the science of that is you gotta a lot of times see stuff before it happen. Like you gotta know what your per- what the person across from you gonna do before it happen. Sound like a lot of film watching yeah. too. Really yeah. getting to know your opponent. Like me, I'm a, I like once I like really fell in love with boxing. I'm like an encyclopedia. Like my boxing coach, like he, if one of my teammates get a like a opponent or something, and he uh, he don't know their name, he gonna call me like yo Kenny you know who this is I'm like yeah I seen it before I, cause I, I look up like I be st- up at night cause I'm a night out when I ain't in camp I be up to like 4 in the morning mm-hmm. so I be up on it's this website called Box Rec where you can just look up anybody record if anybody does box and they lying to you then you think they lying to you go to Box Rec type it ain't me you gonna find the truth look, out look, look, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see if they lying but I be up on that just like scrolling through results and the schedule like all night just and I just and then if I see somebody that I think interesting, I'll go to YouTube, type the name in, just look at it. Like, I just be looking at boxing all day. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Damn, you say you're an encyclopedia. Yeah, like, I, I, know, I know my shit. Okay, so <laughs> who's some of the uh, some of the Chicago boxers you rock with that's that's current? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I got, it's just, they don't take it serious, but there's a lot of people out here that can fight. So... Tay, he started, he got into his late, so Tay, he he take it serious though. He he be working. Uh Chris, Chris Milley, he work. Uh we spar a lot when I'm when I'm at home. Uh my boy uh Sean Simpson, he don't box no more. He got a, he got an injury, but he he's he he don't box no more. But he was like he was right there with me when we was amateurs. We came up together when I was since I was eight years old. 
Uh, he was he twelve and zero, but he got injured, so he had to stop. Damn, like lifetime injury. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he had to, he had to give it up. Damn. So wait, you earlier you said you don't like to get hit. And I mean that's understandable. Have uh-huh. you ever got hit so hard that you reconsidered your um uh-huh. <laughs> your career? <laughs> you reconsidered nah. your career. Nah, I, when I'm in there, I'm a I'm not an asshole. But when I get in the boxing ring, I turn into an asshole. When when you in the ring, like I feel like your adrenaline be rushing. So even though you are getting hit, can you really feel it? Nah, like, I was about to say uh, the next day. No. <laughs> 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 he feel like Marty Marl, boy. Yeah, like, the fight after the fight, you still good that day, that night. So, but that next day, I'll be waking up sometimes, not sparring, but like a real fight. Because when we fight, I fight in eight ounce gloves, so they like this big. I wake up, and I can't even lift them. Up. <laughs> <laughs> like the last fight, I, I he didn't even do nothing. Like he couldn't even fuck with me at all. Like I stopped him <laughs> in the fifth round, but. It's still like just blocking punches and everything, like getting hit in the arm. I woke up next to her. I was like, because uh, uh, I was like, that day, I was like, oh, I ain't so I feel like I'm good. I, I was like, I ain't so I feel like I'm good. I ain't, I ain't, ain't nothing going. How long was your last fight? Uh, five rounds. I stopped him in the fifth round. No, no, how long oh, was it? was December it? 17th. A oh, word? That yeah. Was kind of, that was recent. Yeah, that was yeah. fairly yeah. recent. Yeah, because my recent. birthday on Christmas, it was the week before my birthday. Ooh, oh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a real present right yeah. there. <laughs> like, how was that? Last year I fought on Christmas. On, on your, your birthday. birthday. Yeah, it was on uh it was on Fox. It was on Fox Sports. What the f- what? Is it is it is it crazy for you to like to be in your place and coming from where you come from to be fighting in these arenas and in these places? Yeah, I fought at Madison Square Garden twice. So like, ain't that some crazy? That's like, how, how how does that make you feel coming from Chicago, mm-hmm. going through all the trials and tribulations you went through to go fight in Madison Square Garden? Not once, but, but twice. twice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think with me it's different because my my parents and my family always instilled in me that I'm special. Okay. So I think when I go places like that, I'm like, this is where I belong. It's like I'm I'm supposed to be right here. Like it's showtime. Yeah. This is where I, this is where I'm supposed to be at. This is this where I was. Born to be at like my dad always told me to this day he'll send me a random text and be like you special like it's time everybody gonna know you special real soon like my dad instilled in me since the beginning once he seen once he seen that I started liking boxing he instilled in me like you special like you a special talent and the whole world gonna know it so when I go when I go play like I don't matter who in the gym I don't care who in the gym cause I'm in the, I'm in the gym with like World champions like T- Terrence Crawford. That's my that's my big brother. Like I spar with him all the time, and I'm in there with him, and I'm talking shit with him. Like, like you ain't we we in here. I'm, get it in. I don't care. I don't care who in the gym. When I go in the gym, I'm like this. Is my like like in Vegas, I go in the gym. Mm-hmm. Everybody know like it's time. Uh, Kenny here, lace him up. I feel like I passed the place in Vegas. Is it kind of like near the strip? It's a couple. It's a lot of. It's a lot of gyms out there. It's a gym on the battle strip that I be going to. It's okay. kind of a top rank. Okay, yeah, that's the one. I, I, yeah, I that's pass why. By. That's why I be training there most of the time when I'm out there. Got you. Uh, I, I actually before we even get into like, um, cause you have a place, you have a studio on the south side. Before we get into that, mm-hmm. I want to uh, chime in on, cause we talked about everything that's been motivating you. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure within your career that was something that may have demotivated you from. Even one to get to where you at now. So has there ever, ever been any like uh, anything you you know so a challenge where you wanted to stop? I ain't gonna say want to stop, but it was just a hard time for me. My big brother, uh, Ed Brown, he from he from he from here. He from the West Side. It was it was on the news. Big. It was like he real popular on the West Side. Like everybody, okay. er, I swear to God, everybody on the West Side know Brown him. Brown do sound familiar. Yeah, Ed Brown. He got killed in 2016. Okay, mm. and uh, that was like real hard for me. Uh, he like, he one of the reasons why I started liking boxing. Mm. So, this yeah. your, this your blood brother. I nah, am my blood brother, but, but he might like I don't introduce. He ain't never introduced me as his bro, his friend. He ain't never. I ain't never introduced him as my friend. Like that's my big brother. Since because he he used to move in with me and my parents when the summers he would come from the west side and move move in with us in the summer in the summertime. He go to all the tournaments with me. Like he he the reason that made me kind of like boxing because he made it he made it fun for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he made it fun for me like he was always happy always smiling so I make me laugh we had tournaments I'd be like I don't want to be here and 
He'd keep He'd hop right. in the car and be like, man, what are you doing? Push me around. Like, like he, you know how Big Brother bully you sometimes. He's mm-hmm. like that, but. You ever spar with him? Yeah, a like, lot. <laughs> he used to beat me up. Then when I got older, I got in that ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's us West Siders. Yeah, he, <laughs> he used to beat me up all the time. Then when I got older, it was. <laughs> It's was, it was that. <laughs> he said, tw- so 2016. Yeah, it's December, December 2016. So that, that was right before my first fight on Showtime. Mm. So he was supposed to be on the the card that was on Showtime too, but he got killed like a couple weeks before that. Fuck. Mm. So, so like, yeah, that's in the documentary. Like, that's a, that's a rough. That information. people know about the the name of the, the title oh, of the it's, documentary. Uh, it's called Ringside. Uh, and we got nominated for an Emmy, actually. We ain't win, but we got so nominated. No, so nominated. you an Emmy nominated? Oh, yeah, 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 put that in your bio. Yeah, right. uh, what year was that? 2021, they got nominated for an Emmy. Damn, yeah, congrats. That's the best sports documentary. Shit. Yeah, like, they had, that was in the documentary, and uh, they they had met Ed before, too. So after that fight I was talking about, I kind of, like, like, broke down right after the fight. Like, I won the fight on TV. I ain't even bust a smile. None of that. I'm just like, all right. I was just about to say, like, considering, because, like, dealing with loss is not easy for nobody. So mm-hmm. I can't imagine having to go in and fight. Like, did you have to prepare differently or, like, mentally? Were you just like, this is a fight that I'm going to win for him? Like, yeah, that's how I know was. that was a while ago. But, like, what yeah. was your mental space like when that happened? Uh, It was rough because he's like, he's like one of my best friends. So it was, I mean, and... Before that, in the summertime, one of my other homies, he one of my other best friends, I used to be around all the time. He had got killed, mm. like, like he got killed that summer, twenty sixteen. Then my brother, yeah, he got killed in December, December twenty sixteen. Mm. So, do you feel like you kind of was able to let that out in the ring? Uh, I don't know, cause no, nah, I think I don't think so, cause I went to the gym and I was like fucked up, like sparring. I was in there crying while I was boxing mm-hmm. so it ain't really like i don't know that that's that's something like my grandma when my grandma passed last year uh well not last year 2021 uh i went like my my fiance she was like you ready to go back to the gym i don't think you I think you should chill a little bit but i just had to like i had to go like like i was in there like boxing like boohooing like but i did that feel like a good release at least at the time, I don't, I don't think so. Cause I, I probably should have waited. I mm-hmm. probably should have waited before going to the gym. Cause I was, I mean, you get you get hurt boxing if you ain't like all the way locked in. And I want, I want oh, locked okay. in. I was like, I don't know why like, I'm thinking he was in there punching a punching bag. Nah, I was. It was somebody in there trying to hit me. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm like. Nah, that's what I'm like. Don't that feel good? You not punching a nah, punching bag. I went hitting the punching bag. If somebody in there trying to hit you me. You hitting somebody. <laughs> There's somebody in there trying to hit me, and I'm crying, like, and they like, they like, uh, what's wrong with you, man? They like, real. nah, they like, you want to get down? I'm like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> Yo, do us a favor and yourself a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to tap that notification bell as well, so you can stay updated. Now let's get to the video. Previous to the break, man, we you know we, we talked about some great things. Uh, you show love to E Brown, correct? Mm-hmm. And then you off air, you say he was twenty and oh. Yeah. Damn, and then you say you was you was you was giving it to him as y'all started. I, ain't gonna say I was always giving it to him, but I got him a couple times. I got him a couple times when I got older. And it was always good work with us. That's love, man. Now, um, studio wise, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you have a studio on South Side of Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, my dad is the uh, the boxing instructor at uh, Ogden Park on 65th and Racine. Okay. Anybody anybody from Inglewood know where Ogden Park is. So. Uh, I mean, break down like how people can can get in tune and and you know oh, yeah. come uh, to the studio. And anybody, uh, so it's free for kids. It's free for kids. I think I don't know. I ain't, I ain't checked on the prices recently for adults, but it's I'm it's not, when I tell you it's cheap, it's cheap. Mm-hmm. It's like three months for like thirty some dollars. So it ain't no like monthly fee, but for kids, it's it's free up until they seventeen or eighteen. Oh, okay. that's good. That yeah. is. That's I how you do that. that. Yeah, like, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you to take your kids up there with my pops. Don't be, he gonna make He's them serious. work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope and, y'all hey, know that. And if, if you go up there as an adult, he gonna make, make you work. Make you work. 
So thanks for letting me know. Don't you going up that thing in his suite? <laughs> look, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, yeah. he going to go up there. <laughs> Man, he thought about it. <laughs> He's about to get worked but out. That's the uh, gym. Like I go up there a lot when uh, I'm at home because like the kids, they 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 look at they look up to me. They like they be walking up to me like if they ain't never seen me. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, you Kenny, uh, you was in ringside. Because a lot of them be oh. watching the uh, documentary. Like one, I got a note on my fridge one of the kids gave me. It say, uh, to uh, Kenny, the best boxer in the world, my favorite boxer. Like, like How that make you feel, man? Nah, it made me happy because I know when I was growing up, like, so like, like we've been talking about earlier, boxing ain't really a Chicago thing. So when I was growing up, I ain't really had too many people. Yeah, to so, you, a person you look up to is walking through the gym. Yeah, I ain't really had too many people to look up to or like be like, oh, I know I could. Like me and Ed, we was on this at the same time, so it wasn't like, like I look up to him, but it wasn't like somebody like, oh, he a, he a professional and he all over all over with it on TV and stuff. Like I ain't had it because, like, I did an interview before my last fight and they was asking me how I ended up in the position I'm in. Mm-hmm. Right now, did I have like a mentor or something out of Chicago? I'm like, nah. It was me and my dad. We was learning, learning on the job. I ain't mm. had nobody like, you should make this move because I got experience in it. Like, I ain't had, we ain't had none of that. No experience. We, we Just building a plane while flying we, it. Yeah, we was learning this as we move on. So, so learning that. So, when did things really take a turn where y'all knew what y'all needed to do? After loss. Lesson. Mm. After that, turn the lesson into yeah, a blessing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ever since then, it's been it's been up. I know you was speaking on off air about your team being all over the place. Mm-hmm. You got people over in Florida, and I be watching boxing, and I and it, it seems like it be a lot of people on the team in in the, in the, in the boxer corner. Mm-hmm. What's what's the roles of everybody that's yeah that's 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 in your corner? So you get. So like a championship fight, you get like four. One of them, excuse me, one of them is a cut man. Just in case you get like swollen up or you got to cut, like they know how to slow all the bleeding down, get the swelling down. And then you got a head coach, and you got assistant. And then like sometimes some places, like it's like it's a different commission for every state. So they got all of them. Some of them got like different rules. Right. So sometimes you get four, sometimes you get three. Most of the time it's three. It's two. It's a coach, it's just a coach, and a cut man. Mm. Uh, when they when they be talking to y'all in the corner, do y'all actually be tuned in to hear what they saying, or y'all be uh, so zoned out that? Nah, me and my me and my corner, we be we me and my corner, we be having like conversations in the, in the corner because uh-huh. like I said, my coach he want us to be smart, so I be seeing stuff while I'm in there. Like one some of my some of my fights, like one of my fights when I told you I fought the dude uh, that was twelve and 0, 11, I got like in the middle of the, like the middle of the fight, they was like, uh, so I was winning the fight. And they're like, keep doing what you're doing. I was moving, like, boxing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I looked at him like, no disrespect, but I ain't doing that, mo- that no more. He tired. I'm finna go yeah. walk to him and beat his ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, on here, handle him, boss, man. <laughs> so, like, we, like I have whole con- – then, fight after that, I was like – I had hit a dude, and, like, he was kind of wobble, but I ain't get the knockout. As I came out the corner, I'm like, my bad, I seen it. I was supposed to do this. But, like, I had a conversation with my corner, so – Say I saw it. I'm gonna get his ass next time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you currently hold two belts. You got the mm-hmm. WBA, the, the WBA uh, Intercontinental belt, and I got the WBC, basically the United States WBC belt. Is that costing your pockets at all? You know, nah, holding nah, these nah, belts. They don't, they don't do that to the to the world title. They okay. don't take them sanctioning fees until the uh, world title. What is a sanctioning fee? Basically, you pay into to represent belt. they belt. Yeah, because you won. Yeah, that yeah. damn, that's crazy. Yeah, you yeah. really gotta pay to be the yeah, ball fun. Yeah. You basically gotta, you gotta <laughs> pay. Crazy. You gotta pay to be the champion, basically. Wow. Well, so to, to get them belts after a good long fight, and them belts is heavy. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like hold on, I don't hold this shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get like that? Nah, it's that the the adrenaline still going. So you ain't even if you was tired once they announced you a winner, you ain't tired no more. Is it? So, Instant. Yeah. I kind of got a question about these sanctioning fees, though. So, like, d- has there ever been instances, and I don't know if you know this, where, like, stuff gets so political because somebody paid for something, or is it, like, you pay after? 
Like, uh, does that make sense? Like, is they okay? Yeah, Basically, I'm trying to say is they rigging fights because somebody nah, paid for a belt? I ain't gonna say nobody rigged no fight. <laughs> ain't nobody rigging no fights, but I mean, you pay the fight. It's like. To fight for their title, basically, you got to pay a fee. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's not like you paying to win. nobody that's going to decide the outcome oh, of the okay. fight. It's just like you represent my organization. So, so it's like a membership fee. So I'm going to touch your pocket. Mm. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Like, like a, a labor, a labor, a union. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I now, just, now, now, what if your money run out? <laughs> And you can no longer pay for nah, this. Nah, you go, you gonna pay? They gonna take it out your uh, when you fight. They gonna take it gotcha. out. Your <laughs> they, they, they gonna get they, they, get they do. <laughs> so that's just to have the belt and hold the belt. Yeah, but if you don't want it, you like I oh yeah. Belt. If you don't, if you don't want it, like you'll be like I ain't paying the sanction fee. They, it's like they, it's just called they strip you of the title. Mm. So then it's a vacant title now. Nah. Hold on, what? Damn, so, so I gotta pay to get the title and wanna, the belt. If you want to represent my my. Just like if you're gonna represent my brand, then you gotta. <laughs> that's crazy. That's some political <laughs> shit <Okay>. right there. <laughs> that's that's deeper than 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 the sport, right? Yeah, yeah, everybody that 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 be talking to me and they don't really know too much about about boxing. When I start explaining to them, like they be like, I, like my fiance, her dad and her mom, I be like talking to them and explaining how, like, the last like two years. Mm-hmm. Since I be dude, a lot of people don't want to fight me. Like, I was just gonna <laughs> bring that up. Like man. I got offered to fight for the world title mm-hmm. uh, in that fight December seventeenth. Like, okay. but I didn't spar with the dude before, and I whooped his ass and he. So like they was telling me like leave me on for like a week or two. Like we fight for the world championship December seventeenth. They said yeah to the fight. Then they called me. my manager called me back and he was like they pulled out. I was like. Cause when he told me, I was like, "You sure?" Cause I don't think he gonna fight me. Cause he didn't been in the ring with me. He know what's up. Like he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna so, fight me. So what happens mm. when a person just cancel? Like, cause I mean, it's nothing really. I ain't in the position of like I was ranked thirteen. So anybody that's ranked number one through fifteen can get the call at any time okay. to fight for the world title. But him and his people know me, so they know what's up with me. So. Like when they when my manager said they had said yeah initially I was surprised I was like what like like my manager wasn't there when I sparred with him so he don't know mm-hmm. but my dad was there and Coach K was there and they both was like you sure they said yeah <laughs> <laughs> they knew right off yeah. the bat you got his ass from last time you don't want to come waste his time <laughs> one of the one of the biggest things that we ask boxers yeah, when they come up yeah. in here when they come up in here the question about sex yeah, before a fight yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no he got a little one right you know he got a little one so it looks like you been uh, getting nah, in here nah, before nah, these nah, fights nah, after <laughs> <laughs> That's such an honest answer. He said no after. That's after. <laughs> after. So n- during training, there's no getting good. No, I don't be home. No, nah, my girl be at the crib. I be with, at the with the guys. Oh, so that's <laughs> never mind. I'm gonna keep that. Like before you that's go out the training, I you get it. So as soon as you come, okay. <laughs> but why is that? Like, do do it really drain you of energy and whatnot, or is it just a training thing? Or is it yeah, a mental know. thing? I don't know. I mean, I did it before the gym before, like training. It ain't do nothing to me, but I ain't. I don't feel like taking no chance with it. <laughs> it's like me with poles. I don't split them because yeah. I'm thinking about <laughs> man. Look, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. You know, because yeah, what? He don't want to split that pole. Yeah, okay? like, like, and she be like, she ain't going for it either. She like, nigga, you better get up out of here. Like, oh hell! No. Like when I first started working with my new managers. They, uh, one of my fights, she was there, and they was trying to, like, keep us separated, like, blah, blah, you know, I'm like, nigga, she know how this go, like, she know, she wouldn't even jeopardize that, like, I'm finna <laughs> chill with my girl, leave me alone. <laughs> was it, was it, was it rough for her to watch the first fight, her first fight, come to mm-hmm. her first fight in the FUC box, or? I don't know, cause she don't really talk about it, talk too much about it, she don't really, like, like she be at the fights, like, kinda quiet, like. You probably be better be this. Like the last fight, the last though. fight was the first time I could hear her on like, on like on the camera, like on the recording, I can hear her like screaming. Like What's the she last say? two fights, go baby. She's like, go kitty, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like my my fight, not the fight before last, not the last fight, but the fight before last, I knocked the dude out, and that's when the first time I heard her like yelling, like. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Let me show you a video real quick. Oh, he got footage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, send us that. <laughs> we can put that in the. We can. Uh, yeah, like, ooh, damn, right in the. Ooh, 
I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> send us that clip. <laughs> that, you got that on your IG too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah send us that. And we we oh, gonna post that. Hand. That ain't the end of it. I, I thought that was the last one. This is the last one right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, hey, when y'all see this, matter of fact, head to his IG right now, Kenneth Sims Jr. Y'all gonna see my man using them hands as weapons for real. For damn, damn, for real. <laughs> I only <laughs> seen that from half an angle. <laughs> for real, for real. I mean, looking at that at, at your fight, when, when's uh, when's your neck? Well, do you have an idea uh, of April? In April? April, yeah, it's in April. Um, I'm still trying to get all the details ironed out, but it's gonna be on TV, the TV fight, so. Oh, hell yeah. I'm definitely tuning in. And, I mean, you got to also, you know, let people know, too, again, how they can follow you, stay connected. Mm -hmm. I know you got, like, members only on the site. Uh, please shout out yeah, the I site. Got, uh, I got a website. Well, matter of fact, everything with me is just Kenneth Sims Jr. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook page, fan page. Uh, my website is www.kennethsimsjr. So anybody want to look up me, just Kenneth Sims Jr., you're going to find me. Like I, matter of fact, I got funny. I used to Google myself. Mm-hmm. And I realized, like at a certain point, I used to have to put had to put Kenneth Sims Jr. boxing or boxer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew like I was getting a little like up there when I I ain't, ain't got to put the boxing or the boxing. I just type my name in and just type right up pictures mm -hmm. and articles of me. Hey, and shout out to your team too with the <laughs> prayer. You know them, them, that presser do it to you too, man. And you when you consistently win it like that, man, yeah. you, you building a brand for yourself. So again, man, we we greatly appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. This, this is a home for you, man. Anytime yeah. you're in the city, you're more than welcome to stop oh, by. For sure, for sure. Appreciate y'all. I'm oh, trying man. to come see you fight. I'm oh, I want. I'll be trying to come and support. Yeah, so. you can pull up for real. I, like I be having. They be coming out for me. My people be coming out for me. You said yeah. April. I'm gonna yeah. keep that in mind mm -hmm. and, and, and visit your site yeah. so I can stay up there. I got you. I, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We there. Wherever you at, we there. <laughs>